Welcome again everybody to uh, the topic of oral antral communication and in this uh, video we are going to discuss the appearance of the oral antral communication using the comb beam CT. Uh, as we know that the CBCT is uh, offers the uh, uh, the viewer uh, a three-dimensional image of the structures and hence it will uh, overcome the uh, uh, the uh, problem of two-dimensional images that are seen uh, in the or the problem of two-dimensional images uh, uh, seen in the intraoral and the OPG. Uh, this is a case of a patient who came to extract a, a retained root in the uh, upper uh, um, uh, posterior area and uh, unfortunately the uh, tooth was removed there was removed forcefully which led to the uh, problem of uh, uh, oral antral communication uh, if you can see here for that this patient in particular the bone the alveolar bone he is a, a an edentulous patient and it seems that the uh, the uh, uh, teeth were extracted a while ago long time uh, which uh, which is uh, uh, seen uh, or uh, can be um, known by the resorption of the alveolar process of course resorption of the alveolar process leads to the approximation of the flow of the maxillary sinus to the alveolar uh, bone and to the hence to the oral cavity, which increases the incidence or the risk of the uh, oral antral communi communication. If we have a look on the other side, which is, there was no extraction, uh, you can see uh, that in the sagittal view, that the level of the bone is uh, uh, is almost uh, none. Uh, we can hardly measure a distance of three millimeters and it's the widest area in the molar tooth uh, if we go at uh, the first molar if we go to the second molar there is only around one millimeter of bone uh, of course if there is any retained root in this area and uh, there is an attempt to remove a retained root naturally uh, uh, you expect that there will be a communication between the uh, maxillary antrum and the oral cavity. This is on the left side. If we go to the right side where the problem happened, we will see that the bone, as in the right side, the bone was minimal. There was no bone, uh, as you can see in here, between the... Uh, uh, this is the flow of the si uh, sinus and, and, uh, uh, and it's, uh, 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 this is the premolar area which seems to be th the uh, greatest thickness it's only around 4 millimeters here it's almost I don't know I can't say that is only 1 millimeter okay so what happened here if we follow the flow of the maxillary sinus which appears over here as a thin continuous line we will see that in this region there is no more bone there is a breach there is a continuity there is a breakage of the uh, of the uh, of the flow of the sinus one two you can see a trace of a bone or a foreign body or a piece of a root which remains here hopefully uh, thankfully here it's in the still in the bone it has not gone in the the uh, the maxillary sinus but the problem here is you see this area of grayish appearance that measures around uh, 15 millimeters in height and around and uh, it extends all over the floor of the of the uh, of the maxillary sinus this 
is not fluid by the way because fluid will never assume this appearance fluid if there is any fluid it will be horizontal okay so this represents a uh, granulation tissue or it represents the uh, uh, thickening of the uh, uh, mucosal lining of the floor of the maxillary sinus in response to the oral antral communication this seems to be uh, for, for, has been there for a long time or it was previously, uh, previously present but it was aggravated by the or increased by the effect of the communication uh, between the maxillary sinus and the floor of the uh, and the oral cavity if you go to the la uh, right uh, to the left side you can uh, you cannot see uh, uh, you can see very mild thickening of the floor of the maxillary sinus but if you compare it to the other side here you see the difference between the areas uh, or between the thicknesses of the <coughs> uh, of the uh, inflamed tissue okay so in the sagittal view it, uh, you can see that the uh, the uh, the uh, this is the uh, aura antral fistula. It's big. Actually, there is a big area of discontinuity. It's around eight millimeters, which is a big uh, uh, area. Now, if we look at the coronal view, you will see that again, all this. Uh, this is the floor of the sinus. This is the facial wall of the buccal uh, uh, facial wall of the sinus. And all this was supposed to be fill, uh, uh, um, um, uh, 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 there should be here a floor of the uh, sinus. If we go more, uh, see this area is normal. You can see the floor of the sinus over here. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see uh, here we're going more uh, to the uh, anterior uh, region. Okay, see the floor of the sinus over here. It's all present okay I'll remove this so we are in the premolar region there is no discontinuity over here but if we go posteriorly see now there is no more uh, flow of the sinus in this area which means this is uh, this has resulted in an oral uh, oral antral communication all this you can see compare the left sinus to the right sinus over here see this is a clear sinus there is no granulation or there is no thickening so or thickening of the mucous membrane uh, compare it to the to this area you can only this area is still patent and air filled otherwise all this is thickened mucosal membrane due to the uh, reactionary uh, could be a chronic sinusitis in, in reaction to the irritants coming from the oral cavity if we go more posteriorly then the sinus floor starts to develop okay now if we go anteriorly uh, the 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 area of discontinuity in in the sinus is around 10 millimeters in a buccolingual uh, direction okay now let's discuss uh, let's d see the uh, appearance on the uh, uh, on the axial view in the axial view I will start from the top this is the I'm going from the superior uh, s surface and I'm going down so far you can see that both sinuses seem to be normal here there is no gra uh, there is no thickening except to the small could be a polyp a mucosal polyp uh, on the anterior wall of the sinus but if you go down you go down you see that compare between those two you will see that the mucosal lining is almost see it's almost completely obliterated in this region and if we go down 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 all blocked all blocked and this is because of the communication or all the oral antral uh, communica communication that has resulted in uh, this area. I will show you how it look uh, uh, when I go back again to the area of the uh, fistula. This is the area. I'll remove the measurement over here. This is the area of the fistula and see how it appears here 
on this area. Of course, we cannot see the fistula over here. Why? Because we are actually in the uh, mucous membrane lining of the sinus, which is thickened. Compare this side to this side. Okay? If I go down, there should be now I'm in the uh, uh, now I'm in the uh, 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 maxilla. This is the tooth of. This is normal. This is all abnormal tissue. So, uh, <coughs> if we want to describe this, if we want to report this, we would say that we will have a discontinuity of around 10 uh, by 8 millimeters in the area of a uh, 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 first uh, right molar with a piece of a sequestration or a piece of a foreign body present or a piece of a tooth uh, a radio opacity still present in the gingiva uh, of the of the posterior uh, uh, right posterior maxilla and we would also uh, say that there is a discontinuity as we said a discontinuity in the floor of the sinus and we will say that there is a uh, increased in the mucosal uh, uh, lining of the uh, of the uh, right sinus that measures around 16 uh, millimeter in height and extends uh, f uh, from the uh, anterior wall anterior uh, uh, wall back to the posterior wall, which could be a reactionary or it could be a chronic maxillary right, chronic right maxillary sinusitis. Uh, 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 in reaction to the um, uh, 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 oral and oral communication. Okay, so uh, the good thing about the 3D is that unlike we have seen in the periapical and the OPG here, you can view the uh, 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 discontinuity in a three-dimensional uh, from, from, a, from a lateral view, from a coronal view, from anterior view, and from the superior view. Not only this, you can also, because here there is no superimposition of structures, you would also see the, uh, if there is any tissue growth or mucous membrane enlargement uh, 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 inside the sinus. Unfortunately, this cannot be uh, clearly seen in the 2D uh, images, the intraoral, uh, the periapical, and the OPG, because of the superimposition of other structures that would block or uh, obscure the appearance of these structures. Okay, thank you very much.